apostolate formulated in 1890s still used by scientific community as guidelines for establishing that microbes causes specific diseases and that is god's postulate hi friends at the end of the discussion you will be able to understand the contributions of robert koch what are the four koch postulate exceptions with example if you are new to this channel please consider subscribing this channel first let us understand the experiment of koch and how he formulated the postulates from his experiment he developed a staining technique to examine human tissue he was working on tuberculosis the causative organism mycobacterium tuberculosis he could identify mycobacterium tuberculosis cells in diseased tissue this is a diseased animal and from the tissues he could identify the suspected pathogen that is mycobacterium tuberculosis so in the case of healthy animal that particular causative organism is absent and he he observed the cells under the microscope and found out this suspected pathogen or mycobacterium tuberculosis so from this experiment he formulated his first postulate the microorganism must be present in every case of the disease but absent from healthy organisms as you see in the diseased animal the suspected pathogen or microorganism is present in the tissues whereas in healthy animal the microorganism the causative microorganism is absent but there are some exceptions polio aids and cholera can be carried asymptomatically without any symptoms that violates the first principle so he did his work on cholera and found out that there are many asymptomatic carriers so he even considered modifying or relaxing this first postulate because of his discovery in studies with cholera so in the case of some diseases the patient may be asymptomatic but the disease causing organism may be present then he grew this mycobacterium tuberculosis in pure culture on coagulated blood serum he isolated the pathogen then he made a pure culture that is only with that unique or disease causing microorganism so this culture is from the cells or tissues of the deceased animal and from this he formulated that the second postulate the suspected microorganisms must be isolated and grown in a pure culture but now we know that with the advancement of microbiology now we know many pathogens that cannot be cultured in an artificial medium like trypanoma that causes syphilis then mycobacterium leprae that causes leprosy this cannot be cultured in an artificial medium rickettsi and chlamydia both these requires a host or a cell to multiply then the classical examples now we have many subcellular disease causing particles like viruses prions etc prions are proteinaceous infectious particles that cannot be cultured a disease may be caused by many causative organism so we may not be getting a pure culture in the case of diarrhea meningitis etc is caused by many microorganisms like bacteria fungus etc so we may not be getting a pure culture a single microorganism as a causative agent of a particular disease then some microorganisms can cause many diseases at different sites within an individual or a diseased animal like streptococcus pyogenes can cause sore throat but also cause scarlet fever and bone inflammation even in the case of mycobacterium tuberculosis it can cause infections in lungs bone skin etc then he injected cells from the pure culture of mycobacterium tuberculosis in guinea pigs and found out that these pigs died of tuberculosis so he injected this pure culture in guinea pigs and found out that the guinea pigs got the disease and died from this he formulated the third postulate the same disease must result when the isolated microorganism is inoculated into a healthy host but there are some exceptions he himself proved that both tuberculosis and cholera when injected into organisms not all organisms exposed get the infectious agents or acquire the infection now we know that depending on the immune response or the health of the individual 
the infected microorganism may not cause disease in all healthy hosts. Then another problem is, in the case of human-limited diseases like AIDS caused by HIV virus, so without a suitable non-human host, a researcher cannot evaluate this possibly three, as we cannot deliberately infect a pathogen into humans to test whether it is causing infection or not. And this presents an obvious ethical concern. So in the case of human-limited diseases, we cannot assess based on this postulate 3. Then Koch isolated mycobacterium tuberculosis from the dead guinea pigs and was able to again culture the microbe in pure culture on coagulated blood serum. So he isolated cells and tissues, tissues from this deceased animal that is injected with causative organism and found out that in the tissues the suspected pathogen mycobacterium tuberculosis is there and he then further cultured, made a pure culture out of this cells or tissues. From this he formulated that the same microorganism must be isolated again from the deceased host. The exceptions are many infections by microbes considered as the underlying cause of the disease are absent from the lesions that ultimately develop. If a microbe is causing a disease, at the beginning the presence of that microbe may be there, but at a later stage when a symptom like lesions develop, that microbe may not be present. This is a case with streptococcus infection considered as an underlying cause of rheumatic fever, or we cannot detect the presence of the streptococcus once volvular and endocrine lesions of rheumatic fever appears. At a later stage, this disease-causing organism may not be present in the deceased host. The same is the case with HPV, human papillomavirus, considered as an underlying cause of nearly all cases of squamous carcinoma or cancer of uterine cervix. But after many years, we cannot detect the presence of papillomavirus or we cannot recover virus from the patients. These all suggest that the same microorganism or the causative microorganism, sometimes we cannot isolate it from the deceased host at a later time. So these are all exceptions of Coates postulate. Now we have a postulate which is called as molecular Coates postulate. Based on this Coates postulate, incorporating the advancement in the field of microbiology, genomics, genetics and molecular biology to assess the relationship between microorganism and a disease at a molecular level. So we'll be discussing that molecular cause postulate in the next video. Now let us discuss the contributions of Robert Koch. As we said earlier, a postulate that is formulated in 1890s still considered as a gold standard to assess are microorganisms a specific microorganism is responsible for causing a disease still widely accepted or widely useful in majority of the cases as we discussed there are some exceptions he was working on bacillus anthracis he discovered the anthrax life cycle then also tuberculosis a mycobacterium tuberculosis a causative organism of tb for his contribution in the field of tuberculosis and causative organism he was awarded with Nobel Prize in the year 1905. In the next video, we'll be discussing the modified version of Coates postulate, that is molecular Coates postulate. Hope you understand the four Coates postulate and its exceptions. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing this channel. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com.